Here's another video about paired versus un unpaired t-tests um, using Fathom. Nice little demo that they've got set up. This is from their 50 Fathom set of demos. Um, so we got us a situation. I know there's a lot of stuff on the screen here, but I'll go through it all. Um, what we've got, let's look at the data first. What we've got is a test, and we've got a before and after on the test, and we want to know, is there an improvement? Okay, and so uh, we've got a list of the scores of a certain set of students, student number one, student number two, creatively named, um, before and then the after, okay? And then it's very easy to calculate the change. So for example, in this set, in this simulation, uh, student one went up by five points. Student two cha didn't change at all. Student three went down by one point. Student five had a very big negative went down by 11 points okay but if we, we could go through this whole data set and we could look at all the changes and we could try to get a sense of are the students improving or not okay well so we could also do that graphically we could look at the dot plot of the scores before so here's the scores before and the blue is the mean 85.1 and then here's the scores after 85.2667 not a big increase in the mean and of course, one of the things a t-test would tell us is, is that improvement uh, random or not? It's just likely to be due to random variation or not. So um, we can then look at the difference of the scores. This is just the dot plot of the third graph, because that's really what we care about here, is the differences in the scores. And the key thing is that because this, this person, this row, is the same student before and after, there's a meaningful way of pairing, we can actually calculate this, this column. If there's no meaningful way to pair these guys, then you can't do this, and we're, and you're just we're just done. Okay, you have to go back to the old unpaired kind of t-test. But since they're paired, we can get this meaningful column of the changes for a particular student before and after. Now we can look at this dot plot and try to get a sense of okay, um, the mean of this is bigger than zero, but not a lot bigger than zero. Is it likely to be just due to random variation? Okay, so. Um, this slider in the middle here is to just kind of rerun the simulation with different likelihoods. It's got some sort of uh, mechanism for creating these the after scores so that they're more likely to be truly better uh, when the improvement factor is, is increased. So for example, I put the improvement slider pretty high. If you look at these numbers, they're generally positive. And certainly if you look at the key dot plot, which is the differences of the scores, they're way skewed to the po skewed positive. And the mean is 5.67 probably not random and that's what the t-test is going to tell us okay so let's make it not quite so obvious let's say about two or two point something okay so here's the key difference we've got two different analyses we could use on the left is the paired test on the right is the unpaired test let's look at the unpaired test first because it's really what we shouldn't do and we want to highlight what we uh, the, the better things about the paired in a minute so what we're doing is we're looking at the before scores and we're looking at the after scores, and we're forgetting that there's a meaningful pairing that's the same student that got the 81 and the 77. It's just a bag of numbers and another bag of numbers. There's 30 numbers before, 30 numbers after. The mean is uh, slightly greater than it was before. We've got some standard deviation numbers. We can calculate standard errors. And we're not going to pool because we never pool. And you run a independent sample t-test on this, and you get a t value and you get a p value is pretty big not something where we would reject the null okay 20 22 percent or 0.22 okay now one thing to remember is that there's a there's two reasons why this is the wrong thing to do one is that it's not as effective in discriminating difference when you can pair the other is that if these are paired then it's a is violating the assumption of independence. This wasn't just take, say, uh, 10,000 people and sample 30 people and then independently go back and sample some other 30 people that's unrelated. They are the same people. So this is really completely wrong thing to do in t for two big reasons. Okay, um, It will test something, but it's really a, a, assuming an independence is not there. Okay, so now what about the paired test? What we do is we forget these individual groups of numbers. We just look at the changes, just take the difference. That's a very easy arithmetic operation. We know how to do that. And then we just focus on this, and we just say, is this, does this have mean greater than zero? And is it, if the mean's greater than zero, is it likely to be there just because it's random, or is it really significant? So we do a t-test on this 30-count sample with mean 1.5. We get a smaller p-value here. 
So this is more sensitive to the variation. Now it's still not a p-value we would necessarily reject the null on. But let's just do it, have it rerun the simulation around this level of improvement. Notice here the p-value was 7.2%. Probably wouldn't reject unless we're really um, not very paranoid about a type 1 error. But here's the p-value is much smaller. Okay? And if you look at this, uh, this histogram, this dot plot of the scores, it looks pretty obvious that the scores are improving. But if you look at these guys, individually and don't know that there's a pairing here it's not as obvious that's a good that's a good example um, let's rerun it like here um, here it's got a 0.14 p-value and here it's got 0.012 10 times smaller much more sensitive okay if we run the run the improvement down then we're often gonna see well actually here 0.017 this is uh, we got lucky here it looks like even though the improvement factor wasn't big it actually is pretty clearly biased when you look at the differences. But again, if you don't match them, you, you can't necessarily tell. P-value 0.12 is not very small. And one more example. Oh, here's another one. 0.14 and 0.04, a pretty significantly better p-value. So remember, there's fundamental reasons why this isn't the right thing to do anyway. But even if you're trying, even if you kind of fudge the whole independence issue, it's not nearly as sensitive, sensitive a detector. Uh, let's go up here. Oh yeah, here's a good one. 0.054, we'd likely probably not reject the null here if you look at these two dot plots. And yet if you look at the, the differences, oh come on, th there's an improvement. If you look at student to student, 0, 5, 12, 3, 2, minus, yeah, some students went down, but most of the students are improving significantly. And the p-value here is very small. This didn't happen randomly. Maybe it's not a dramatic improvement, but it didn't happen randomly.